Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to actually do a quick one today. Um, I'm going to show you how to add two-factor authentication to your Linux server um, to help you secure your SSH um, connections on your Linux server, your Raspberry Pi, your IoT devices, pretty much anything that runs SSH. Um, you can go ahead and run this on. Um, normally, most of my videos are always done in the Raspberry Pi, but today I've actually thought about changing up a little bit and just using Linux Mint. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is I'm just going to show you the prerequisites you need to do this. Um, first thing you need to do is you need to get an Authenticator app installed. Um, the one I recommend everybody to use is the Google one um, because we're actually going to be installing the Google software um, well, Google Authenticator app uh, library on the server. So might as well use the Authenticator app. So all you have to do is go to the Play Store or your App Store and just download Google Authenticator. If you're very comfortable with Authenticator apps already, you can use any Authenticator app you prefer. Um, but if you've never used one before, we're going to go ahead and just use Google. So I went ahead and did that already. Okay, I'm just going to put my little documents over here so we always have them for the video. Okay, so I went ahead and got the Authenticator app installed on my phone. Okay, so now i got to get that installed on my server here. So I just want to make this nice and big here for everybody. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want my IP address. Okay, so there's my IP address at 172.16.1.188. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and install the software. So sudo app install libpam google oops, authenticator tacy. Type in my password. Okay, and there you go. So it's already been installed on my system. If yours already has not it'll go ahead and do the installation for you. But mine's actually saying it's already here. Perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and clear that up. And now I got to want to run the Authenticator because I want to get the actual QR code to add to my phone so I can start using the app. Okay, if I can spell it right. Okay, now make sure you do not run this as, as, as root. You want to run this as you so that it will give you the actual login for this user, not for root. Um, so for this case here, do you want authentication tokens to be time-based? I do. Okay, so the first thing here we're going to do is you're going to copy everything down here. So you see where it says new secret key is verification code. We're going to copy all that. I'm just going to put that off to the side here. Now, you're going to want to keep this information because in case you ever lose your phone or you cannot actually SSH into it, you can type in one of these emergency codes into there and it'll actually let you give your authentication, kind of like a one-time authentication. And then the next time you go to use it, um, the, that code itself, I do believe that they, they gets rid of the code. So if I went ahead and used this code here, um, it will no longer be active this, if I try to use it a second time. It's only a one-time scratch code. Okay, and then here's our QR code. So let's make this nice and big here. Okay, so here is what you're going to actually want to scan into the Google Authenticator app. So we open up the app on your phone. You're going to hit the big old plus sign down at the bottom. It's going to sit there and say scan a QR code. And then go ahead and scan the QR code. And then once it's been scanned, it automatically adds it to the list at the bottom. So that's actually it. That's you know, We're going ahead and we're getting, moving a lot faster here with it. Okay, so now we're going to have to answer a few quick questions here. Most of these questions are very simple for most standard users. Um, so the first question is, do you want it to up? Do you want the, uh, you know me to update the authenticator on the file? I absolutely do. Yes. Okay. Do I want to say disallow multiple uses of the same authenticator token? Me personally, I do. So I'm going to hit yes. Um, by default, a new token is generated every 30 seconds by the mobile app. Um, there may be some time synchronization. Um, in my case, I never had a problem with time sync um, because I'm actually, I guess I'm using Google's app, so maybe that's the reason why I've never had this issue. So in this case here, I'm just going to go ahead and press no because I don't want to have any kind of, um, I don't want any time skews up to a certain amount of time. I'm, so far, everything's been working perfectly for me. Okay, so I'm going to hit no for that. Okay, and again, if your computer is not hardened against brute force login attempts. Um, for the most part, most people are going to go ahead and hit yes for this. Um, just because it's an extra layer of security. Even if you think that you're hardened against all brute force attacks and logins. Um, in this case being here, um, I'm still not going to gamble on that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Y for that. And that's it. 
So now we actually got everything installed here with it. So now all we gotta do is just modify two files real quickly. Okay, and then that, and then after that, we'll be able to go ahead and test the SSH and see if it gives us the Authenticator app. So first things first is we gotta get into our um, PAMD SSH file. So sudo nano etc PAMD sshd. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so in here you're gonna see of the top PAM configuration for secure server shell, and this is the section where we're looking for standard Unix authentication. So on the, underneath that you're gonna see the at symbol included common auth. Underneath that, I already actually have them added here. What you're gonna add is this. So you're actually gonna add auth space required space PAM underscore Google underscore authenticator dot so so I bring it up here this is exactly here what you want to go ahead and type in right here at the top okay then we're gonna go ahead and just save that for you by him control X and then Y to save it now we want to go ahead and edit the SS SSH file all right to let it know that we are going to start using this so etc ssh sshd config beautiful okay so first things first in here permit root logins if it is hashed out remove the hash change it to no and this is just very good practice never allow root logins at all all right but that's not why we're here we're actually here for two things so here challenge response authentication yours probably says no so we're going to change it to yes and then the last thing we're going to change here says use pam and we're going to change that to yes okay and once we went ahead and did those we're going to go ahead and control save it to the save uh, control x and then y to save it and now we're going to go ahead and restart ssh so sudo system control restart ssh all right and me i always like to check the status just to make sure it came back um, if you had any problems with it, it would let you know it had a problem restarting it. But me, I'm just a little worry wart. Okay, so everything's all up and running here. So now let's go ahead and try my little putty technique here. So I'm going to go ahead and try to SSH into it. Bring this on over. Type in the password. And as you can see, it's asking me for a verification code. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. My code is actually right at the end. And there you go. And that's how you just add simply two-factor authentication to a basic Linux server. Um, this is great to have. This is, I mean, for as quickly as it took us to do everything, which, again, may have took me a little bit longer to explain it. Um, but as of right now, we're about a little less than eight minutes into the video. And we already got two-factor ready to go and installed on my servers and up and running right now. There's no, as you see, we never had to reboot the server. We never had to do anything else. We just added the package and ready to go. And like I said, I use this a lot with my Raspberry Pis. Um, I put them out in the wild a lot. And I actually do have two-factor on there as well as SSH keys. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do here is we're going to go and I'm going to show you how to actually add two-factor if you already have SSH keys installed. Um, if you try to do it the way we showed you here in this video, you're going to run into a lot of errors. Um, it's just either not going to either bother doing the two factor or it's not even going to bother, you know, verifying that you are even able to log in. The passwords will be corrupt. Um, I ran into a lot of issues. So there is something you have to do a little bit to tweak the, the SSH um, file around. But once you do that, you'll be able to use actually both and we'll be able to show you that as well um, using PuTTY or using any kind of SSH encryption keys. Um, so let's go ahead and get that going. Okay, so now we're going to show you how to add two-factor to a SSH server that has SSH key already enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and actually show you that this server already has that. Everything's all loaded up. I'll bring this back over here. Okay, so you see I have my little banner here and authentication with public key. So it already has it already knows it has a key to it. Alright, so it's actually very easy 
to you know alter it just a little bit to actually have the SSH key and the two factor enabled. Okay, so just give me one second here. So I want to be able to bring up oh, that is up, never mind. Okay. So first thing is we're gonna edit the PAMD file. So pseudo nano etc pam.d sshd. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bigger for everybody. Okay, so before we just we had to add the auth require PAM Google Authenticator. Okay, but this is just actually causing a force for it without actually requiring any tokens. I'm sorry, without requiring any SSH keys. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to comment it out. And I'm going to uncomment this. Now you won't have this. You're going to, have to type this in. So it'll be auth sufficient. Pam underscore Google underscore authenticator dot so. So we're actually changing the required to sufficient um, for this. Okay, go ahead and save that. Control X, Y, and enter. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and edit the SSHD file. I'm um, sorry, the SSH, um, yeah, SSHD file, config file. SSH, SSHD underscore config. Okay, now in here I've changed a lot of things. This server has been used for other things. So things in here you probably have not going to see before, like the banners is, is, is open. Um, Pam is set to no on this one. Um, you know, so there's a few things that was altered in this one, but it's actually okay. So you can just go ahead and follow here what we have to do. Now you can see here I left the port as port um, 2200, um, but you can change it to anything you would like, um, or you can leave it as default 22. Um, again, permit root login is always set to no. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to change a few things here. So password authentication is still no. Okay. Challenge response is no. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to add this line here. Authentication methods space public key comma keyboard interactive. Now what this is going to do, it's going to allow us to use the public key and the token interaction to do it. So it's going to first verify that the public key is there. And if it verifies the public key, then the next thing it will ask you is the keyboard interactive part, which is the password and the um, token code that you get from the authenticator app. And also here, we're going to make sure use PAM will be set to yes. Okay. Now control X, Y, and enter to save everything. And now we're going to go ahead and restart SSH. Okay. So now I'm being told I have a problem. So let's go ahead and find out exactly where we made our mistake, which is probably in here. Oh, it is because I forgot challenge response authentication should be yes. And there we go. So that was my mistake, but we went ahead and fixed it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try some putty work. Okay, so let me just go ahead and bring that onto the screen here. Make it again a little bit larger. Okay, so you can see here, it verified my public key. Now it's asking for my password. And then the verification code. And there we go. And that's it. That's all it takes to require to install, you know, two-factor on top of SSH keys already installed here. Um, again, that was actually even easier. Again, you will have to install the Google Authenticator um, library software package on here as well, like we did earlier in the video. Um, but just to be able to add the extra layer of security now you have on. So now with the way this works is that it requires one to have a public key already installed in the server to have the password and the token generator as well. So you need to have all three of them just to get into this server alone. Um, so it's going to pretty much put a lot of hurting on people who want to try to get into your system here. It's not going to be the easiest to brute force. Um, but again, that's really it. So I hope everybody liked the video. It was a nice little quick video I did here today. Um, I'm going to try to start doing a little more quicker videos like this in the future um, between my longer sets of videos of doing you know, the Raspberry Pi, PFSense, and uh, you know securing servers um, and hardening servers as well with it. So if you liked the video, like and subscribe. If you have any comments or questions below, just write it down in the comments. And until next time, I hope everybody has a wonderful day.